Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop produced by Out of the Box. If you're questioning which platform is optimal for your business accounting needs, we're excited to have you with us to learn about the solutions and key questions for consideration. Today, we welcome Shelly Spencer as our presenter. Shelly joined out of the box in 2022 as Executive Director of Accounting and Data Services. With more than 15 years of accounting experience under her belt, Shelly is a seasoned QuickBooks Pro Advisor and Consultant with a background in strategic planning. Shelly's wealth of expertise, expertise is often tapped by our team and we encourage you to get, engage with her with any questions you might have. As for me, my name is Jeanette Schwartz-Rattan, Director of Marketing here at Out of the Box, and I will be your moderator for the day. Just a few housekeeping items before we dive in. The session is being recorded to give you the opportunity to really engage and ask questions. The recording will be shared with you as a resource after the webinar where you can revisit any key points and information you'd like to review, share it with your colleagues, or keep it for future reference. We have reserved time uh, at the end of the hour for questions. However, if you're hoping to dig a little deeper into something that we cover or need some clarification on a point, feel free to chat those questions to us and we can address those in real time. A little bit about Out of the Box, if you haven't joined us before or maybe it's been a while. Here at Out of the Box, our mission is to empower entrepreneurs with the QuickBooks-based financial tools, services, and insights they need to thrive. Out of the Box is the premier choice for QuickBooks accounting services, boasting over 30 years of experience and a track record of exceeding the expectations of more than 50,000 satisfied clients. Our comprehensive accounting solutions save you time and money while providing you with the financial accuracy, security, and insights necessary to grow your business. As an elite QuickBooks solution provider, we are able to offer you exclusive discounts and pricing, so please be sure to connect with us before purchasing your QuickBooks solutions. With that, I believe I've covered all of our housekeeping items, and so I'm gonna pass the baton so sh to Shelly so she can get started. Shelly, it is all yours. Great, Jeanette, thank you so much. Thanks for kicking off today's call. I'm really happy to be here um, and excited to talk about some of the differences between QuickBooks Online and the QuickBooks desktop version. Um, in our presentation, I thought we'd start by discussing some of the subscription level services, uh, payroll options, and the various features available in the different QuickBook platforms. One of the first steps our team likes to take is to actually evaluate your current accounting environment with a needs assessment. Um, during a needs assessment, our team is going to basically evaluate your current processes in order to determine what your accounting landscape looks like in your existing environment, maybe what needs are not being met, and then through that assessment, we can better determine whether an online platform or a desktop platform will be a better fit for your company. We look for things like whether you have a need for more robust payroll features, a better reporting um, uh, flow workflow that might provide more in-depth KPI reporting, or perhaps you're struggling with the manual processes in which we'll look to harness better data integration and increase functionality between existing processes like inventory or multi-state sales tech usage or reporting. The first factor in migrating your company to a QuickBooks environment is determining whether the online platform or the desktop environment would be a better fit. With QuickBooks Online, you can have more mobility and flexibility, the benefits of working online and the ability to align multiple locations with real-time reporting and multi-user access points. Another key benefit to utilize in the online version are the various third-party apps that you can actually run parallel to QuickBooks Online. Depending on various factors, you know, we might decide during your assessment that you're a better fit for QuickBooks Desktop, and although Intuit is kind of hinting that desktop will um, maybe be retired and clients will need to migrate to an online version only. Desktop also may not, not, not seem as accessible from a live perspective. There are definitely benefits still to using this platform. With one of the desktop platforms such as um, Enterprise or even the Contractors Edition, you can allow for more unique users with your license, a heavier transaction volume, especially if you have you know, a more robust or voluminous business involving multiple stages to estimating, invoicing, purchasing, et cetera. Desktop also um, can really allow for more advanced permissions and consolidated reporting. 
Okay, so let's just start to um, dive into some of the subscription levels and versions. With QuickBooks Online, there are there are really a variety of versions depending on usage. Some track things like sales tax, project profitability, time for employees, and can create more professional invoicing and again robust reporting. With the first subscription level, a simple start, you can kind of begin to harness a great way to get started with QuickBooks Online. You can still fully create invoices, send estimates, and run over 20 standard reports. The price is very reasonable, as you can see. Um, and there's a new, actually, a new feature too. Um, it's a connection with one sales channel, which utilizes e commerce for QuickBooks using their WebGility to track your revenue from different selling platforms like Amazon, eBay, Shopify. Um, and you can actually sync it directly to your QuickBooks accounts, which is nice. Uh, with Simple Start, you're lim you are limited to one standard user and two accounting firm connections. Moving on up to the Essentials online platform. With this level, uh, business clients can actually connect three sales channels. You can create recurring transactions, utilize multiple users, and additional standard reports. The pricing goes up, I don't know, maybe $12 a month, so still, still a really uh, reasonable price structure. Um, with the third tier, the QBO platform is Plus. With Plus, we can start getting into some additional features that can really help business owners evaluate their business from a, a more of a value-added standpoint. The classes and locations now available, we can help you segment areas in the business um, by area or type to identify contribution margins and track to various budgets. The reporting also increases to over 65 standard users and customized reports. Finally, we can start helping with two-sided items. Um, what I mean by that is, like for example, you can use the same item on both a purchase form to record the cost information to an expense or COGS account, and then you can also use it on a sales form to record revenue information to an income account. Finally, we get to the advanced level of QBO. With advanced, account owners can set up 25 different users with specific user roles and customize user permissions. Um, let's see, we can create workflow automation, we can sync with Excel, we can batch invoices, and then we can also begin utilizing revenue recognition, which basically allows you to automatically schedule moving revenue from your chosen liability account to your chosen asset account, rather than doing that you know, kind of manual process of identifying and moving that monthly. Now let's switch over to the desktop viewpoint. If it is determined that desktop is still a better fit, the desktop versions offer three subscription levels. We have Pro Plus, Premier, and Enterprise. The difference is, is really mainly uh, with productivity um, and more industry specific needs. Desktop Pro, the first one we'll talk about. So at the first level, Desktop Pro, you can create invoices and track sales and expenses much like QBO, but Desktop can really allow for a few more advanced features from QBO with regard to lists, which makes the Plus version a nice platform for fully robust general ledger and financial statement reporting. I do want to take a second just to mention that um, as we begin to dive into the various Desktop versions, as far as leveraging the most from Desktop, Pro, Premiere, um, those are, you know, of course still available, but in order to really, I would say, really garner the best outcome, Enterprise is is definitely the way to go. Um, we're just not seeing the Pro Prem Premier versions continue with updates, you know, new features, or offer um, robust support the way Enterprise is, is doing. And we definitely want to set you guys up for success. You know, we don't want to offer a product that could potentially be tabled in the months to come. So just keep that in mind. So when customers jump into the desktop premiere version, this is where a series of additional features become available. You will start to see contractors using job costing, NFPs or, or not-for-profits utilizing programs, funds, and tracking donors and grants, as well as manufacturing and wholesale companies utilizing profitability by product. With Premier, uh, you can actually harness the power of multi-company access and dashboard reporting. Okay, and then moving over to Enterprise, the most robust of the desktop products. Uh, with Desktop Enterprise, you can have 30 users working simultaneously, deeper permission layers, uh, list entries become more granular, and then we can even start getting into heavier inventory controls utilizing FIFO method of costing, 
for inventory management, Enterprise allows site bin usage, barcode scanning, and integrated fulfillment processes within the Platinum edition of Enterprise. Okay, let's stop and take a, um, a second for a quick poll, if you guys don't mind. In the chat section of your webinar, can everyone on the call name the accounting software that you're currently using? If you don't know the level, you know, that's okay. Just um, put that in the chat box. Um, but if not, you know, go ahead and just type in desktop or online. I also yeah, think this yeah. might be a good time. We've got about 60% voted. Um, can we take a moment, Shelly? Uh, you were sharing presenter mode, so people were seeing, they weren't seeing the full slide. Is there any way you could share um, the presentation view of your screen? Sure. We've got about 75% voted. We'll give it another minute or two. Jeanette, are you seeing the different screen now? Um, here, let me close the poll and share that. So it looks like 78% are using desktop. Okay, interesting. This might be a good time too for any questions, if anyone has any questions at this juncture of the presentation. If you don't want to um, raise your hand, you can also feel free to type it in the chat section. Um, someone asked, are the QBO discounts shown ongoing or do they expire after 12 months? With, uh, with out of the box, we can definitely offer um, significant discounting to the pricing that we offer. And that is, it's ongoing. Um, you know, it's updated on a regular basis. All right. And does online have a discount for multi companies? You know, I'd have to actually ask um, our business development department on that one, because I'm, I'm not sure of the discount at a multi company level. Um, so I can make a note of that and then we can check um, and try to give some information at the end of the presentation in terms of a percentage. Okay, um, I will check with Jennifer on that. Okay. We've got a bunch of questions coming in here. Do you feel enterprises encouraged because Premiere and Pro will become discontinued? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the tendency that we're hearing. Um, and, and it really it's just more a matter of the fact that we're not seeing the updates, um, you know, and the, the changes to the enhanced features like we are with enterprise. So, you know, we would want to steer in the wrong direction and we want you to be able to harness you know, the most from the, the subscription level. Um, we don't want to kind of send you in a direction where something might be, you know, tabled soon. <laughs> so, um, but that is the rumor kind of going around. Um, when do you expect QuickBooks Pro Plus to be continued? Discontinued? Dis discontinued? I don't have a date, um, but I would just, you know, I would, make sure you keep it in the back of your mind over the next year, year and a half, um, just to kind of look at the advantages of enterprise and see how that might be a better fit, even from um, a feature standpoint for your business. Um, so this might be kind of reiterative of a question that was already asked, but our prices for online per company, we use enterprise and have five companies. Yeah, that's um, still a question I'd have to get with in terms of the multi-company threshold. Um, you know, I know we do offer discounting within the different versions and subscription levels, um, but I, and I do think they would consider some group discounting if it were, you know, multiple companies. We would probably want to do a, an assessment to kind of take a look at the volume and, you know, kind of see what's going on in the different companies and how it's structured in your legacy system. Um, and then we could definitely come up with a pricing structure that works for you. Do we support app integration with QuickBooks Online? Oh, definitely. So QuickBooks Online has a number of apps already kind of built in that you can integrate with, and we can help you, you know, during, if we, like, let's say we're actually doing a data migration, setting up QuickBooks Online from scratch for you, we can actually help to establish those syncs for the apps that, that reside in QBO. And furthermore, um, we do work with a lot of uh, front-end software um, environments that 
we can sort of serve as a liaison right, between that software and QuickBooks to make sure things are mapping properly. So for instance, like Field Edge or Service Titan, if you're using one of those, if you're in the HVAC industry, um, and you know, you're kind of you're kind of using it on the front end, but you want to sync it over to QuickBooks. Um, there's a lot of questions I know initially with just making sure that that accounts are mapped properly over to your chart of accounts. And then when data is coming over, we want to make sure it's hitting the right accounts and it's syncing properly. So we're not seeing any redundancies or you know items getting hung up um, in certain accounts that they shouldn't be. So we can we can definitely help with with a lot of that that mapping process. Um, what is the biggest difference between QBO and QuickBooks Desktop? So I would say uh, between QuickBooks Desktop and and um, the online version is, you know, I think that Desktop still kind of leans towards the the larger, mid-sized to larger companies, and probably the biggest feature is the industry reporting, right? So we so in QuickBooks Desktop there are industry specific reports that you can run tailored for your entity type versus QuickBooks Online does have um, a, robust, a robust set of um, reports embedded, uh, but they aren't necessarily industry specific. And then I would also say probably when it comes to assemblies, bill materials, you start getting some of the heavier inventory controls and, and inventory workflow, I still feel as though desktop is um, more robust and more capable of handling those intricacies. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to close the questions for now because they keep pouring in to let okay, you get that's them okay. more. Um, but <laughs> type them in. We'll get we'll get to them even if it's not you know even if it's at the end we can email you or reach out to you as well. Um, but you're still in. We're still seeing presentation mode. Is there any okay. way? Um, help me out for a second here. I got it. Maybe I need to switch my screen. Um, I think maybe if you hit that um, below the edit button on your main slide there, that center button, if you hit that, that might. Now? No. Hmm. Um, so I am on, so you're just, you're just seeing the wrong screen is what I think is going on. Yeah. But I'm trying to find the spot within the web. Um, the go to webinar where I can switch the screen and that's what I'm not seeing. Webcam. Um if you see a little it looks like it looks Undock like pain maybe from it's second it should be second from the bottom button on your toolbar for drawing go -to tools menu, make another attendee the presenter. Or go to sharing. Okay. Okay. And then there's a drop down menu where you can choose the application and you would choose the PowerPoint presentation. Did that switch anything? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Both screens. All right. Well, well, we'll share the slides after uh, after the webinar as well so you can take a closer look. There you go. That's it. Okay. My apologies, guys. <laughs> I use Zoom. That's my go-to, so I apologize. I'm always doing Zoom for these presentations. Okay. So let's move on after our polling. Let's, let's dive into some payroll options. Um, I know it's a fun topic amongst business owners, but it's a good one. So um, there are our payroll options that you can actually add to your QBO subscription or you can run them as a standalone service. So when it comes to the online version, you can see from our chart here that um, there are three payroll levels that you can subscribe to along with your QBO bookkeeping subscription service. If you plan to use QuickBooks to, to really fully prepare your payroll run, then you need to select one of the payroll levels and add that to your subscription. We do offer um, payroll core which is the most basic of the levels and that allows you to process payroll within with support available really at any time um, core automates the payroll so you can set it up and create automated processing with the next level which is premium you you still receive full service payroll but there there's going to be an expert available to evaluate your payroll and then answer any questions that you might have as you're processing premium also offers the ability to time track um, that feature is really nice if you're looking to allocate time to projects. And then finally, let's just say like you don't want to do process, you know, you don't want to do payroll at all yourself. You have multiple employees, et cetera. 
um, Elite is the way to go. It's a plan that allows Intuit to, to actually prepare it for you. It um, also gives you like a more personalized HR advice and protection from um, penalties, like tax penalties, uh, which is definitely a nice feature to have rather than worrying with all the payroll report filings, you know, the 940s, 941s, W3s, 1099s, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So all three platforms do include the automated um, taxes and forms. With desktop environments, there's a do-it-yourself option as well as the full service option. Desktop offers um, basic payroll, but keep in mind that it does not offer tax forms or W-2 preparation. Enhanced payroll does assist with your payroll forms, but it does not offer any assistance. If you are looking for assisted payroll similar to the Elite on the QuickBooks Online offering, you're just going to want to purchase one of the full service options um, with assisted payroll, and you can also import uh, with QBO. You can use QBO for just payroll or for standalone payroll setup. Okay, so here's this chart will kind of give you like a visual so you can see the differences between the desktop payroll advantages and the self service and full service. The big advantage I think um, most clients appreciate is the automation with the full service suite. If you can, you know, have us prepare and file for you and guarantee no tax penalties, I mean, that's definitely a game changer when it comes to doing payroll. Okay, let's talk about some accessibility options. With QuickBooks Online, many of our clients, you know, they're busy out in the field, they're on the road, not in the office 100% of the time. One of the really nice features with QBO is the ability to download the mobile app. With the mobile app, you can automatically sync with your QuickBook Online subscription. Um, you can view your books, you can view charts, you can view your transactions right via your phone at any time. The mobile app, um, it really does hold the same security level um, as the browser version, and it's available for both Android or your, your Apple device, or iOS device. <laughs> you can see a dashboard view, and you can record transactions, which include sales receipts, expenses, deposits, you can even prepare estimates um, and invoices with the ability to receive payments right in the palm of your hand. The accessibility, it's somewhat limited, I guess, from an accounting perspective. Like you're still going to want to continue to reconcile and maintain your journal ledger and your financials from inside QuickBooks account back to the office. Um, I guess I always want to take a moment to mention a new partner we're working with, and that is um, Makers Hub. In addition to streamlining transactions while outside the office, Makers Hub can help. Um, it really can make importing payables simple and seamless as it, as it integrates with QuickBooks Online. It's basically a data-enriched accounts payable hub that uses data capture software to read bills and invoices to eliminate the need for all that manual data entry. So when it comes to the desktop environment, you can access your account from a, remo a remote workspace. Um, you can utilize third-party apps to handle any mobile work you might have, but the flexibility derived from the mobile app is, is definitely limited. With desktop, your software will be installed and maintained, I guess in most cases, by a third-party hosting company, and then it will be externally hosted by QuickBooks. It's kind of like a, you know, like a more formal backup process with an accessibility point for outside accountants. As we all know, it's critical to allow for your data to be backed up daily to maintain data integrity and save the work being prepared by your team. With QuickBooks Online, data is still backed up to the cloud, but you can't back up or restore your data to a previous state, nor can you uh, um, extract a file for a specific time frame for use, as in like for an audit. With desktop, you can make a local backup anytime you want, and then you can utilize utilities to condense a file or, or extract data for a specific time frame. It's kind of the biggest difference when it comes to backups between the two. All right, let's talk about um, permission levels. As you know, there's you know there's different folks in your company that you want to be able to allow different users to hold different roles in your company. With QuickBooks Online, the number of users vary across the different subscription levels, as you can kind of see above, as do the types of users. And really, depending on the subscription level, you can either assign types of users and or create custom users. Inside user permissions, and upon setting up a new user, you're, you're going to be given the chance to select a form um, from a list of options 
for what responsibilities you like to assign to that user based on a drop down list. With QBO Advanced, you can actually create uh, custom users and define the permissions yourself across multiple areas. You can also assign the ability to approve, edit, or delete transactions only, or then all, kind of, you know, only these or all of these within multiple types. Um, so when it comes to desktop and user permissions, the structure, the structure is a little bit different. You will use the file menu to set up users, and then you're going to add them to the user list. The, the, the permissions overall, they're really a little more broad in that you can assign categories to the users to encompass either all areas of QuickBooks, selected areas, or as an external accountant. The access is going to come up for each module in which you'll be given categorical access, as in no access or a subset of selective access, right? You can kind of see here. And here. <laughs> so these are, I always kind of think of it like modules, you know, so you can kind of see what you can do within each module. But the access is going to come up within the module in which you want to give categorical access, access as in no access full, or that subset of selected, selective access rights. So after you set up the new users and you define, you know, kind of within the categories, you can also assign roles to users which encompass multiple tasks. Again, this is top. Okay. Yeah, I think that kind of wraps up our um, talk about user roles. Another another favorite topic, as you all know, is sales tax. So let's let's dive into some of the differences between desktop and QBO when it comes to sales tax. So within the QuickBooks Online platform. Uh, sales tax features, they can really help you automate and streamline the sales tax process. There is now a new automated sales tax feature too, which allows you to customize personalized sales tax rates, automate payments with reminders, and then harness the, they call it the acquired, which manages the sales tax rates. Um, we also partner with um, a new sales tax professional um, named Avalara, and um, those folks can, they can really provide counseling and automation outside of QuickBooks. So they can offer like more intricate sales tax accounts with multiple states, regions, or even international tax uh, sales tax implications. So we're very happy to partner with them. Upon setting up sales tax inside QuickBooks Online, there's a somewhat, you can kind of see here, it's like a somewhat interactive menu that's gonna guide you through the steps to coordinate the process. QBA, QBO is going to update your company information and then help you identify the states in which you have Nexus and then locations that you're registered and required to file in so it can mimic the necessary tax implications within your forms and then create the filings for you. If you're curious how the software makes the sales tax calculations, you can look behind the scenes with how things QuickBooks Online will make the determination based on your customer's tax exempt status, where you, where you do your business, um, you're selling and shipping into, and then of course, what you sell. So there's kind of four different prongs into, you know, what goes on behind to actually make those calculations. QuickBooks Online is gonna define your customer status and the customer preferences, and then it's gonna set up in order to create automation within the calculator reporting on the various forms. The preferences, um, really set up behind the items helps you establish um, for selling and those are equally as important this is going to enable the auto calculating for sales tax when you pull out um, excuse me items onto an invoice <clears throat> so once you have all of these sales tax definitions set up properly users through really through any juncture of the sales process they're not going to have the ability to define their own sales tax rates right so it's kind of preset for you that way um, Everything's calculated automatically, uh, which in turn is going to prevent erroneous data filings to be overstated or understated. At the end of the sales tax process, there is the filing of your returns. QBO is going to incorporate the frequency of the filing status, and it's going to set reminders for both of the filings on the return as well as making the payments. Again, that's going to help you avoid penalties for untimely filing. It really just takes the burden off your shoulders. 
Okay, so if you're one of our desktop platform users, your sales text settings are gonna look a little bit different. There are some preferences that need to be established at the company level, such as when you file and naming your various agencies. Um, your, your consultant that helps you, you know, set up your QuickBooks account can definitely help establishing these when setting up your desktop environment, really as well as your QBO environment. With desktop, you will establish the sales text settings assigned to items as well, and that's do, done do, um, via your items list. So here um, you can kind of see an additional screenshot showing the sales tax preferences that need to be established at the list level and the customer level. And then here we can kind of see a nice example of how desktop version calculates the sales tax amount for you when you're creating an invoice for sale. You're going to see a drop down based on the item and customer preferences you set that are already populated with the dynamic codes appropriate for what and who you are selling to. Okay, so that's everything on sales tax. Let's go into another um, fun little topic, attaching documents. This question comes up so frequently when I'm doing assessments and training calls, but um, it's really a valuable uh, asset to um, a feature in QuickBooks. So attaching a receipt. Within the form section, um, an expense form, you will see that there's the capability to, to include an attachment in QuickBooks Online. Remember now, we're, we're still looking at QuickBooks Online, so keep that in mind. But this feature is gonna allow you to go right into your saved documents, browse for an item, and then attach it right inside the transactions attachment window. Inside the desktop version, you'll have the ability to attach various documents within the modules upon creating a transaction. Here, for instance, um, you're going to notice that there's an attachment queue built right into the invoice creation selection. You can really upload just a multitude of documents and across multiple forms. Okay, so earlier, I know we discussed the QBO mobile app for viewing your books, creating transactions, and entering data exclusive to QBO. But desktop does have an app that will allow for document uploads if you are out in the field. Also with desktop, there's a feature that will allow you to send bills or receipts right to the upload center by creating an email. And then the upload center can be basically a repository for documents and by user. All right, so keep in mind, you can also upload images across forms like within the vendor center to attach bills as well. Uh, another really cool feature in desktop is the receipt capture feature. You can um, basically manage your receipts in the vendor center and then you can use the receipt management window to upload receipts or include email receipts from your, um, right from your mobile device. Okay, so I think that's everything on attaching documents. Um, this might be another good time for a quick question or two. Does anyone have anything they'd like to ask about or give their experience with maybe? And that's a lot to cover and there's more, <laughs> but not today. Um, but a, sorry, we've got a ton of questions here, um, but before we move on to those, I just wanted to send everybody a quick chat if you have any questions about pricing or availability, um, I, I'm, going, I'm chatting out our executive director of business development's email address. Her name is Jennifer Abney. And I just really suggest you reach out to her because as Shelly talked about earlier in the presentation, we encourage people to go through the process of a needs assessment. Um, that's really one of our biggest value propositions because we, try our best to optimize your systems for both cost and automation um, and to really address the specific needs of your organization and its growth cycle. Um, so if you have any questions about pricing or availability, please reach out to Jennifer. She is um, very well primed on our products and services and can make uh, the suggestion for best fit for you. With that being said, let's move on to our questions. 
Um, are you sig seeing significant updates on QBO? The reporting is not as robust as desktop. Um, you know, within the reporting, I have not honestly seen a lot of updates recently, but they are always coming out with new features. I mean, I get a list of new features just about monthly on, you know, different tips and tricks for using the new features in QBO. Um, with the reporting, you know, a lot of it really comes down to customization and the filters that you're using. So, and then of course the level, right? So you might want to consider bumping up to a different subscription level. But if there are items that you're wanting to see that you're not sure how to find or how to customize the report, if you want to send us a list, email us, feel free to do so. Um, we can, so, you know, we provide a multitude of different services, right? So we can um, answer any questions you might have about your existing QuickBooks environment, a legacy system. Maybe you want to, you're interested in migrating over to QuickBooks. Maybe you're in need of some financial cleanup work, you know, to get your taxes caught up we can help like we can help with catching up your books reviewing your books to be sure everything's posted properly reconciled um and that you have a set of financials you know that you can really trust and then in that process we can um add in some time for training where we can show you how to run some of those reports um you know in a more specialized way um and basically the way, the way that works is we we borrow your quickbooks file right we do a quick assessment and then kind of see what's going on, and then we help you decide, you know, what path you want to take. All right, next question. Does QBO offer syncing with third-party POS as an example? Yes, it does. Um, it actually has its own POS um, platform, and we can definitely send you some information on how that works, but it's, it's pretty seamless. Um, can even update inventory. Now that, you know, we have to look at the subscription level that you're on, to be sure that's compatible with that. Um, but yes, absolutely. Okay, can you offer a specific app that will automatically integrate sales receipts from Shopify into Desktop Enterprise? We currently use Shopify Integrator to sync with QB Desktop. It's decent at best. Yeah, so the QuickBooks Online is the one that has those sales channels built in, and it's really as simple as just, you know, initiating it and syncing it. I would have to look at the the sync feature within QuickBooks Desktop to see if that's available. We can create that web connection. Um, there are times that those third part that web connector, and it may be just as simple as, you know, a phone call to reach out to them to see if that web connector is available with QuickBooks. Because as you know, desktop, you can actually now sync, you know, with bank accounts, credit card accounts. So it might just be a matter of um, determining if that web connector is available. How well does QBO work when you're invoicing 100 plus invoices per week? Oh, that's it, plenty. Again, you know, it comes to the level of um, service that you're looking for. But yeah, it's more than capable. Um, it, it really kind of gets into with the invoicing you know, do you want some added features like within the invoice and do you want to add classes, you know, so that you can run a class P&L and track your business by segment and really see, you know, the contribution margin of different areas in your business. Um, but yeah, I mean, the invoicing, not a problem at all. Have you heard of QBO being hacked or unsafe? No, you know, that has, I've been working with QBO for years and it seems to be always a prevalent question. Um, People are always very concerned about that, but and I think they've tightened down even more. Um, I really have not. It's very secure when it comes to even syncing up your accounts. You know, it sends you a pin. It does not show any of the the credentialing information. Um, so I, I would have to say it's it's very secure. And I could get you some stats too on that if you if you'd like to see something about the technology behind that. Do you find QBO payroll to be reliable? Assisted payroll has gone downhill and has neglected to file payroll taxes for many of our clients. So are they using QuickBooks? Um, they're not using Core, they're using um, the next level, but they must be using an assisted payroll. I know you probably can't answer that question or ask that question back. I'd have to look at which which subscription level you're utilizing. Um, I, you know, I have heard a little bit about Intuit reps being hard to reach now and then, but you know, we have consultants that can kind of serve as a liaison between that processing and your books. So we can log in, we can, you know, start a chat session with them to figure out, you know, where is that data gone? And then we can help you with getting 
uh, legacy payroll information in and then establishing the workflow so that payroll does run properly. But yes, it, sh it should work precisely the way you need it to. And, and with and with um, the reporting or the filings, there should be an archive section. You, you, you should be able to check to see the archived reports that are filed for your company. Okay. Um, I had gone through the migration from desktop enterprise to QBO only to find out that we cannot do purchase orders or sales orders to tell what inventory we have available and on order. Is this coming to QBO? Okay, so let me break this apart. So sales orders and purchase orders, um, what, oh, I can't ask what level. Um, I think it, again, might come to what subscription level you on because those features should be available. Um, now, some of the features may need to be reestablished. Um, like, you know, if you had certain fields that were utilized in your legacy system that didn't carry over with the migration, um, we could certainly be of assistance in, in going in and looking at what was migrated. Like, they, must, they might have done a list and balance only migration, and so you know, they just brought in the balances, right? So maybe we could look in there and see if we could utilize another field to bring in the rest of the data if it didn't all, all come across, but um, should be capable of that functionality. You'd have to look at kind of how you're set up and what, what level you're using. And again, some of these things can be addressed via a, an assessment. So we'd kind of, you know, we'd take your books and just kind of hold them hostage for, you know, an afternoon and we would look at all that and make sure your preferences are set up correctly because a lot of times there's some behind the scenes preferences that just didn't get turned on in the migration um, and maybe we just need to do that for you and, and you know help you to utilize some of those features better. Sorry Jeanette, let me interrupt you. <laughs> no worries. Um, this is a question um, regarding desktop. Okay. I've had problems in the past with losing attached files. Do those files get backed up somewhere? Yeah, you know, I, and I've heard this um, with when you do a backup too, um, that this this does periodically happen. I'm gonna research that one. If we could get their email address, um, I think I may have seen a recent solution to that. Yes, um, I'll share the questions um, that have been asked in the associated contact information. Okay. Yeah, I think that is a backup issue. When I, I've seen, I've just seen that recently. When the backup's happening, the um, saved documents, some of the saved do documents are getting lost. So let me research um, a solution for that. Will accountants have the ability to review receipts as well in QuickBooks Online? Okay, so in QuickBooks Online, you can either assign a role, or depending on the subscription level, you can customize a role. And so with that customized role. I believe there's a feature in that module that would let you turn off that viewing or turn it on. So we'd have to look at the permissions by user. Um, will attachments and desktop transfer to online if we convert? Hmm. I don't think they do. I have to be honest with you. I don't I don't believe they do. If you're if you're migrating not, over. Yeah, uh, I don't think they do. I think there's one thing that gets lost, but I can I can definitely research that as well. However, having listened to some of Lisa's, Lisa is our, is our co-founder and chief strategy officer. Some mm -hmm. of her presentations, we do have workarounds for these kinds of mm -hmm. things. Yeah. So long. So just because it isn't immediately available doesn't mean that information is lost forever. Um, during a migration, we can, there are things that can be done to kind of as band-aids to, to, to right, store. Right, right, right. Like it may not be the customary customary in the, the regular process but they can maybe take a download of those and then you know somehow find a way to integrate them over after the migration's done or something so yes. yeah uh don't let that dissuade you right <laughs> when i renewed our data, data guys are amazing <laughs> yeah, uh when i renew desktop do current settings remain such as tax rates assigned users etc okay was that moving from desktop to, to qbo uh, you have to reset. You, you basically have to. You basically have to do. You do basically have to set up in the sales tax center those settings, okay? Um, but that's part of the the preferences and um, setup workflow when you're when you're in there because it wants to make sure it has all the right, you know, all the correct entities and agencies. Um, 
So yeah, I think you're gonna have to reset those, reset those up. Um, okay, when tracking employees' time using QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise Diamond, is there an app to clock in and out? Desktop, yes. So there is timekeeping uh, with the the higher level uh, desktop subscriptions. Um, if they're talking about utilizing timekeeping and then you know being able to um, allocate it, you know maybe to jobs or what have you. Yes, there's definitely a feature that enables you to do that. Okay, when creating a new worksheet, it downloads as a CSV file. The create a new worksheet is grayed out. When will this be fixed? Oh my goodness, can you repeat that one more time? Sorry, <laughs> I didn't when catch that. Creating a new worksheet. Create a new worksheet. It downloads as a CSV file. The okay. create a new worksheet is grayed out. When will this be fixed? Hmm. Yeah. I think I'd have That's to see that error. Uh, it, okay, are you, are the, oh, wait, I can't ask them a question. It might have to do with, are they on a remote server or on a desktop instance? I'd have to see the error they're getting when they're trying to do that. Sorry, I'm trying to visualize that, but I think I'd have to see the actual process. Um. Is there a list of third-party apps that integrations have already been built between the systems? We use third-party WMS systems. Yeah, so there's the, the QuickBooks Web Connector, and that actually does allow integration for a multitude of different third-party uh, apps and platforms. It's just a matter of coordinating it with the um, that third-party provider. Um, I heard the Intuit point of sale is now Shopify. Can you confirm? So QuickBooks Online does have QuickBooks POS, and, and I do think I have recently read that it's called Shopify. Um, I would need to research that a little bit more for the naming. Um, okay, so I found out from this person who asked, do you find QBO payroll to be reliable? Mm -hmm. He's using desktop assisted payroll. Does that help you answer the question? Desktop assisted. He said assisted payroll has gone downhill and has neglected mm -hmm. to file payroll taxes for many of our clients. Hmm. Many of his clients, so he has a, he must have a number of different um, entities. Um, yeah, I, I can't speak to, you know, if you had ran into a certain rep that has um, not been helpful. I have heard, you know, at times it can be hard to get through to someone. Um, but again, you know, what I'm, I think the most important takeaway from today is, you know, we can serve as that liaison. Like we can help you um, figure out where the payroll is in the process. Um, and you know, reach out to them and try to figure out how we can help in that process. But you shouldn't be ha having trouble with preparation of payable uh, payroll using assisted payroll. Um, okay, yeah, we might encourage you to reach out to your rep or to Jennifer, whose email address I chatted right. to, um, to dig a little deeper on that and ensure you're getting what you need. Um, this is a great uh, crowdsourcing solution for the attachments issue. Andrea said, I have the solution for the lost attachments. We experienced that ourselves. They're saved in a folder called attach in the same location that you store your QuickBooks file on your computer. Just copy paste all the attachments into the attach folder for the new file and you're all set. Thanks, Andrea. Excellent. Yeah, let's um, post that or save that and we can um, post it with the next Tech Tuesday. Yes. Uh, can we accept credit card ACH payments on QBO and desktop? You can, yes. So now, so like if you're in um, QBO and you're sending out, you can send out invoices both in uh, desktop or QBO. 
the attach or the um, the send features right within the invoice screen in uh, desktop. And then when you send them in QuickBooks Online, it sends a link. And so on the other side, they can click on that link and then pay it right from from there. Um, assuming you have the uh, bill pay established and you're on the right subscription level. All right, next question. We use Enterprise and are concerned that we have heard that all desktop versions will be discontinued moving to only QBO. This is a huge concern for us since QBO doesn't have the functionality that we need and have heard it is slow, especially when there are multiple people working at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so, so they're saying QBO is slow? They've heard that it's slow. Okay, yeah. I really haven't experienced that that too much. Um, you know, and it, it especially it's especially nice because you can indeed have multiple people logged on working live in that um, the online environment. Um, I really can't give a specific timeline for the desktop versions and when that's going to expire. Um, I think the Premier, you know, Pro and Premier are the ones to 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 really consider on that front. Um, I just, I don't see enterprise going anywhere right now. Um, and so what we're saying is, you know, just be aware and and, and consider um, selecting enterprise because it, that's where we're seeing them, you know, continue to create the updates, con continue to add features and so on and so forth. Along the same lines, there seems to be a push to move clients to QuickBooks Online. We are satisfied with desktop. Is there some reason looking ahead that we should consider QBO more strongly. Well, <laughs> this is this is the uh, the million dollar question that we hear it all the time. But um, and, and I have to say, you know, I've been using online for for years and years. Um, I used it with a, a large um, law firm. They had what they call the small companies. We had you know probably fifteen different small companies using QuickBooks online. And you know, then everyone was ah, oh, we just you know don't really like QuickBooks online. But I have to say it has really come a long way, and I'm seeing things monthly where they're making updates. Um, the integrity is there, you know, in terms of the data integrity and the backup and the um, um, you know as far as security purposes. You've got the live real time environment. So once you're starting to see you know your bank balance and your register balance is lining up and things are reconciled, it really is a powerful tool. Um, it's it's got all of your um, ability for your financial reporting. It's come a long way with inventory. You know, when you get into the advanced level, you just really have to, you know, consider the level that you're choosing. Um, and we can help you make that determination through your, your needs assessment, you know, to put you in the, in the best fit. Uh, you know, there are some nuances, you know, job costing is desktop, you know, they use project, what they call projects over in um, QBO. But, you know, with the right level, you can still evaluate your cost to your, um, margins and you know it's it's come a long way so it probably can accomplish more than you realize as long as your preferences are set up and you're on the right uh, subscription level <clears throat> all right if we move from enterprise to advanced online can we also move our merchant account over so we don't have to input all the customers credit card info for recurring billing yes yes so so in QuickBooks, you'd have to reestablish that, but I think you might remember earlier I was saying that link goes out with the invoicing. And so that's where you, you could set it up behind their customer information, and then that would maintain that, um, that information. And then when they receive that link, they can follow that link to make the payment. Um, this is going back to the mobile apps. Um, a user is asking if... The mobile app maintains user permissions that you've set. Um, yes, because they're still logging in as that particular user. You know what I mean? When they're they're still getting that online experience via their credentials. So yes. Okay. And final question here: uh, Can we only renew QuickBooks Online for one year at a time? I presently have the three-year subscription expiring in December. I'm sorry, could you repeat the beginning of that again? The can we only of... renew online for one year at a time? That I believe is the customary experience outside of our our services, but I would check with our billing department to see what arrangement they make when they set you up. Because it might be a little bit different. 
and I don't want to speak to that because that's not really not my forte when it comes to the billing uh, aspect. Perfect. Um, I believe we've answered all of the questions submitted so far. If for some reason um, we missed you or didn't get to you, uh, please feel free to uh, email me, Jeanette Schwartz at Out of the Box Technology, um, and we can get those those questions answered for you. Again, if you have any questions about availability or pricing, I encourage you to reach out to uh, Jennifer Abney. Her email is here on the screen for you and I also chatted it to you. Um, she can certainly get those questions answered for you, get you started with product demos, get you started with a needs assessment if need be, um, all of that good stuff. Um, I'd like to extend my thanks to Shelly for sharing her expertise and bringing such an engaging session. This was great. We had tons of great questions. Um, Absolutely. As, thank you, Jeanette. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, you're welcome. And uh, thank you to everyone who's attended. Uh, thanks for all your great questions. Um, as a reminder, this recording will be shared with you later this afternoon. And we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar, Preparing to File Your 1099s, scheduled for next Tuesday, October 31st at 12 Eastern. Registration for that webinar will be included in the follow-up email and is located on our website as well. Thanks again, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you, Jeanette. You're welcome. I'll talk to you soon. Look forward to working with you guys. Bye.